happy Tuesday, you guys. I hope you guys Tuesday is coming along well. All right, so you guys know on Tuesdays I like to bring a word, okay? Because remember, my job right now, I'm being charged with to get things in order. And I've been reading out the book of Isaiah. Um, I'm still in my 20s because um, whoo, Isaiah um, consists of great mysteries and parables and visions and everything. Um, and scenes, you know, that the Father have, you know, granted Isaiah to see. Okay, um, Isaiah, Isaiah is the book of, uh, uh, you know, the new covenant, you know, the second judgment and everything. And you guys should know, Isaiah is really split up in two parts. Let's just say maybe from chapters 1 through uh, 39 is like judgments and, and all bad and indictments and everything. And then maybe from chapters 40 to 66 is like consolation, comfort, you know, what you guys should expect, okay? Um, right now, I think I'm on chapter 26 because it takes me quite a while to go through Isaiah because I had to read and write and constantly read and write so I can make sure I understand, you know, um, because I don't want to come and bring you guys just the wrong information. So today what I'm going to be reading you guys um, is Isaiah chapter 2. Um, I read chapter 1. So you guys are going to know going to be going maybe right now chronological order 1, 2, 3. And I'm probably skipping some chapters until I get through the whole chapter. And once I get through the whole chapter, I'll come break down the whole story for you guys, right? Um, based on the judgments on the nations, Jerusalem, um, Judah, um, and Israel. Um, and this just the nations that the judgments that um, that's going to come against the nations for affecting in Jerusalem and also Judah them being affected because of them, you know, acting like Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, practicing other gods and following false idols and everything, right? Um, so we do know that when when um, the second coming come, right, you know, um, that the Gentiles and and um, Israel is going to be have to going to be grafted in. Um, but of course, even though we grafted in, you know, it's still going to the uh, the tail is going or the head um is is going to be um us actually and the tail is going to follow right so the head is going to be israel Jerusalem, um judah and the tail is going to follow and it's going to be the same way you know um they're basically going to be our servants per per father in the bible okay um however not everybody's going to make it though um because a lot of people don't believe a lot of people not even taking the time but a lot of people you know um don't want to accept the bible as it is it's true facts okay because we got Peasants out there that's giving hard doctrine. Some people can't even handle it. Hey, I'm all for it. Bring out hard doctrine 24 7 because um, you got to bring hard doctrine people so they can understand. Okay, now we do. We do got some peasants that try to, oh, the father this and he said humble. Nope, nope, nope. You guys need to understand that the father was, is a great and terrible God, right? Um, when he's coming, when he come bring his rap, it's going to be coming great and terrible because he's going to perform his marvelous works whether you guys like it or not. And those, you know, who, who sit around and take each scripture and try to justify it to their own liking, he's going to tell you a part too, you know, so everybody's going to be judged whether you like it or not. And all the people that who is trying to teach you, um, you try to maybe push it to the side and throw it away because we do understand. And it's our job to try to teach you guys because it's going to be too late soon, right? You know, you guys got to remember at each point in time, there's a spirit and there's not a spirit. Right now, we got the spirit, but there's going to become a point in time where spirit not going to be here, okay? So right now, you got to take advantage of the teachings and understand. Try to, you know, transform in some form, fashion, away. Um, because even if you guys not paying attention, the world as we know is not the same no more. We have already entered that portal, okay? We've crossed over already. You know, technology can take over. We're in Atlanta nuclear. You know, we're going to be in this, um, in Atlanta, the, what, Romans of Wars and Wars, race wars, people going against own people, right? All this is prophesied in the Bible, and it's been, um, it's been, it's happening right now, it's taking place. So those who are asleep, I beg you guys to wake. So wait, maybe you didn't get a pastor to help you. Maybe you need to get your knees and try to talk to the Father so he can guide you. Because if not, you're going to be lost in the sauce. You're really going to be lost in the sauce. And when everybody that's, that the Father is preparing to rise, you're going to be so lost. You're going to know what, you, what to do. But remember, the Father said, let the wicked remain wicked. Let the righteous remain righteous. Let the whores remain whores. Let the stupid remain stupid. Let the foolish remain foolish. Let the wise remain wise, right? Because when it comes, that's exactly how it's going to be. And all those that's not reading the book, Gonna be thrown out of the book. Gonna be and gonna be um and gonna experience eternal tor uh, eternal um torture forever. Okay, uh, opposed to those who's gonna who's gonna receive eternity uh, from the Father, life forever. All right, you guys. So today I'm gonna read um Isaiah chapter two. Okay, um chapter two is basically talking about you know the um. 
Judah and Jerusalem's um, indictments against them, okay? Um, because Judah consists of, what, David, uh, Levi, and Benjamin. And then, um, so Judah and Israel. And Israel consists of the other ten tribes. But, of course, they're going to come together. Um, but right now, like I said, this chapter about to read, um, I read chapter 1, chapter 2. But chapters 1 through 12 talks about Judah and Jerusalem um, judgments against them anyway. Okay, so now I'm on chapter 2. Let me see, can I fix this a little bit? I don't want it to come out this time. So I'm going to secure it, okay? All right. Chapter 2 in Isaiah, um, King James Version. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. And shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in the paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and he shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they lean war again, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore, thou hast forsaken thy people of the house of Jacob, because they be replenished. From the east, and our soup says like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of the strangers. Their land also is full of silver and gold, neither is there any end of treasures. Their land is also full of horses, neither is there any end of chariots. Their land is also full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their that which their own fingers have made. And the mean man bowed down, and the great man humbled himself. Therefore, forgive them not. Enter the rock and hide thee in the dust, the fear of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks on man shall be humbled, and the highness of the man shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of the host shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. And upon all the cities of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fence wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the highness of, of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth. For the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty, when he arises, he shake terribly the earth. In that day, man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one of himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks. For the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty, when he arises, he shake terribly the earth. Cease ye from man, whose breath and his nostrils, for, in, for wherein he is to be accounted of. So you guys see, this whole chapter 2 is talking about the judgments and everything um, for Israel, okay? Um, you know, Israel really consists of Judah and Jerusalem, but in the ancient days, you know, David and Solomon, um, they, they was together in David and Solomon, but when it came to, you know, um, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, they separated um and they was divided into him, Jewish and Benjamin, Levi, and the other and the other ten tribes. But right now, um, the Isaiah is coming out, Judah and Jerusalem. So that still is one. So this is our judgment going against them. And you guys just heard what it said in, in chapter two. So uh, remember, in the last days, like it said, it should come to pass, you know, um, that the Father House, you know, which is in Zion, um, you know, uh, Mount Sinai, you know, um, in Zion. You know, um, he should have in the top of the mountain. It should be exalted above all the hills. So you guys are going to see them anyway, right? A lot of them is going to go out, you know, even the Gentiles, they're going to go out and be like, um, oh, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob. And he's going to teach them his ways, right? That's where it come in when I tell you guys that the Gentiles and um, Israel is going to have to be grafted in. Okay, so the Gentiles is going to want, you know, um, to follow Jacob's laws, right? Um uh, the father's laws, you know, um, 
that was gonna be Gentiles when he come doing the um doing this this um second coming, you know, um the new covenant um for of Isaiah. Um so again, in that second coming right now, the Gentiles is probably doing their own thing, got their own gods, their own idols, but when this time takes place, the Gentiles is going to cling on to Jacob. They're going to want to follow his, his laws and everything. They're going to become our servants and everything. There's not going to be any more war. Like he said, um, and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords to plowshares and their, and their spears into pruning hooks. Um, and they should not lift up sword against nation, neither should they learn war anymore. So when the father come, you know, and he establishes Mount Messiah and the Gentiles start following Jacob and we are in the Jew and the, um, Israel and the Gentiles be grafted in one another, right? There will be no more learning of war. All those weapons and everything will be plugged down. Everything will probably become farming tools or something like that. Um, and the father is calling you guys. He said, oh, have so Jacob come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. He just wants you guys to walk in his light. So many people is walking in darkness, you know, and they're justifying all their filthy ways, y'all. I'm telling you, we got so many people trying to make you believe that their lifestyle is okay. They know it's not okay, okay? And their conscience comes to them, okay? I I'm sure many people that talk like that, they can't even sleep at night. Okay, there's a lot going on with them mentally. You know, they have their problems throughout their life. They can't be happy. They can't keep a man. They can't keep a woman. They can't keep a job. You know, their mental status messed up. They're on medication. You know, um, they probably overeating or can't eat. You know, maybe an alcoholic or a drunkard because their own lifestyle. And people don't even understand that the Father do not tempt us. We tempt ourselves. We make our own decisions. So everything you're going through is because of you. Start walking in the light of the Lord, and I promise you, He will bring you great peace and understand that surpasses all your understanding. Okay, and you will know it's Him. Um, he also says, um, "Because thy thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east, and our soul says like the Philistines, and they please themselves and the children of strangers." Right. So Sue says like the Philistines, just cunning, coming out the mouth, you know, manipulative, deceitful, saying things, you know, the Philistines use their own language, you know, to say things that, you know, um, so maybe um, guide Israel the way they wanted to or or Israel now being like the Philistines and being Sue says, OK, and, and following their ways like the um, Philistines. Right. Allow themselves to be a company and strangers and follow their idols and follow their gods, you know, and. Um, bringing all these things together, that's against God, right? And that's why these judgments are going to take place. He is very, very mad, right? The father is really, really mad, okay? And he also said the land is also full of silver and gold, neither is there in, any end of their treasures. Um, the land is also full of horses, neither is there any land in of their chariots. Yes, people love gold and silver. That's their God, right? They have to break down. You got some men have a chain here, chain here, chain here, chain here. For what? For their reputation? What is it showing? That you're a fool who love gold or a jewelry that value material things other than your health and your life and your righteousness. That's that's what it shows. You know, so that's what the Bible said. The land also is full of silver and gold. Um, neither is there any end of the treasures. It never ends. They got to keep buying more and more and more, you know, um, just to show people their status, to make people think that they are something, you know, to make people admire them, make them think they, you know, and that's some type of power or authority, make them feel like they beneath them. Okay, but, you know, just, just believe it, just because, you know, people do go out and get all those things. Everybody don't have to be that way. You know, remember, it's always mind of a matter. You know, gold and silver do not make you, right? Wisdom is way more important. It's better. It's more beneficial. It's more rich to your health, not gold and silver. Okay. And it also says, um, their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own things have made. Right? So they got these idols. I mean, anybody can be an idol, though. I mean, the chain that cross. On your neck is an idol. The father said, "No graven injury on earth or in heaven should be on you." Okay, so those 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 crosses, anything that represents something on the earth, you know, or the seas or anything is a graven image, right? I have Yah, yeah, I have Yah. I'm just representing the father. I don't have a cross. I don't have a a, a basketball. I don't have a a, a a person on me, right? Because those are idols. You know, I can come in all forms and everything. Um, also, the art, like for instance, he say. They worship things their fingers have made. You guys need to understand. The Father really want the beauty to us to be his nature. So when you go out and see the seas, the mountains, the snow, the rain, that is art, okay? That is made from the Father. That is that's from the creation. That is art that the Father wants you guys to see. Now, but most people use their own. They, they, they worship the things they make with their hands, right? The cars, the clothes, the jewelry, right? 
um, pins and rings. This is what they worship, the things they make their own hand instead of, you know, oh, art on the wall. Instead of going to look at nature's art, they use the world as art. The father's not happy about that. You know, he wants, he, he, he created this earth for your beauty and your eyes. So nature for you, you guys be amazed how, how beautiful nature is. You know, I like to go climb the mountains and walk and watch the oceans and all that. I like nature more than anything, okay? Uh, and plus, we need nature. We need the sun, right? It's very, you know, personal to our will, being I know. Nature is, whether you guys like it or not. Um... And it also says, and men bowed it down, and the great and the great man hung himself, therefore forgive him not, enter into the rock and hide him the, the dust and the fear of the Lord for the glory of his majesty. Um so they said he's saying like the man just bow it down, right? Bow down to everything, to strangers, to idols, to his sexual immortality, you know, to his manipulation, to his deceitful them, and he won't humble himself. And you know, when the father say that he's he's giving us mercy and grace. You guys getting the time right now for mercy and grace. There's gonna be a time when mercy and grace is gonna be extent. It's not going to be any mercy and grace. So you have the time right now. So the things you're doing right now, you have the time right now to get yourself together and humble yourself. You know, um, mercy and grace is not going to last for long. And when you die, mercy and grace is over anyway. So when you die and you haven't repented, you know, and, and if I have a lot of mercy and grace, you know where you're going. Eternally tortured. Okay. All right. Um, now, for the day of the Lord, the host should be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he should be brought low. So these are your proud people. You know, you got those people got to be shy, they got to boast everything. Every time you, be on, you see them on Facebook, they throwing money, showing their gold, showing their teeth, showing going to get diamonds put in their head, all this stuff. Those are lofty and proud people. Okay, and those people most of the time gonna be happy anyway because they got a point to prove to show you. But he's gonna bring them all the way down. So all those that's high, even some about the leaders, everything, right? Um, he's going to bring them down because the father will be exalted during this time. All the leaders, all the rulers and everything, you know, all those proud and all those people on high top, they, they right now, for the time being, it's a point in time, they're holding their authority, they're holding their position. But when the father come back, everything going to be belonging to him. And he's going to be the one to exalt and rise up. So all those lofty things, everybody's going to bow down to him. The cliffs, the rocks, the mountains, the oceans, the seas, the rain, the clouds, the people, the devil. Whomever, because the devil's his son too, and the devil only can do what the father allowed him to do. Everybody would bow down to the father when he comes back, okay? Um, let's see. Mm, all right, so, and upon the cities of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon the oaks of Bashar, and upon the, all the high mountains, and upon the hills that are lifted up, and upon every tower, and upon every fence wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. And the loftiness of man should be bowed down, and the highness of man should be made low, and the Lord alone should be exalted in that day. You see that? And the idols he early, he shall early abolish. abolish. You see? In that day, he will be exalted. Remember all of the proud, you know, the happy, all, you know, just too happy, the boastful, you know, the evil, the wickedness, the kings, the rulers will be brought down. So bow down to the father and the father or the son will be exalted. Oh, because um, the father himself, you know, um, you know, um, allows the God and son to die because of our sins. And um, remember, the son is just the father in express image. Okay. All right. He's, he's God in express image, and, and he has flesh, but his spirit is God. He has the spirit of God. Okay. So he's just God. Um, during that time, he was God in the flesh. Okay. And then when he died, you know, when the, when the Messiah died, then he left us with the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, you know, what the pops out to take us through, to lead us to all truth, okay? And say, um, and they should go into holes, into the caves of the earth, for the fear of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty, when he arises, to shake terribly the earth. And that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship, to the most and to the best. So <laughs> when it do come, all that gold and that silver, he said it's going to be cast to the most and the best, right? They're going to be going to the clefts of the rocks and everything, right? Uh, everything, nothing's going to be still. You know, when he do come, everything's going to be moving. The mountains, the clefts, the rocks, the best, the people, everything. You're going to see right before your eyes, okay? Um, and it says, cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils for wherein he is to be accounted of that's verse 22 the last of this of this chapter two and like i said before when i told you guys in my little shorts trust in the lord and no man right he's saying cease ye from man 
whose breath is in his nostrils. For where he is, he accounted of. He's man like you, man. We both got breath. So what makes his word more true than my word? What makes his beliefs more true than my beliefs, right? That's why if I say don't trust him, you know, don't trust no man. Don't trust me. You know, don't trust nobody but the Father, okay? However, the Father do send people like myself to lead you guys to the truth, right? So he used, remember say he's going to be a lot of, what is it, a lot of sheep in wolf clothing, a lot of pastors doing that. And you got all some truth. I mean, I know maybe a couple of them true. Uh, for the majority out of 100%, I probably could I maybe only say 3% is true, okay? Because the majority is all leading error anyway. You know, um, but I know there's one out there. He's so hardcore. Everybody hate him, and I love him. I want him to keep coming out. He he keeps it real, you know, um, 100% word from word. He don't care. And guess what? Let me tell you why they can't beat him. They can't challenge him, believe him, because my father said no weapon formed against him should prosper, right? Because he is following in the light for the Lord. So don't matter who come at that man, who come at this hardcore pastor that's reading these books, you know, and he got people from, was that, Africa, Jamaica, you know, and he got people going against him. You got the pastors coming to go get some verse of him, the homosexual pastors and regular pastors. They, they trying to go against this man. They can't, they'll never beat him. The reason why they would never beat this pastor is because he's walking for the father. The father is protecting him. I'm a prime example. You know, when people try to come against you and you walk for the father, him, let them touch you. They would never touch him. As long as he's walking for the Father, you know, and I, I love his word, you know, that he's a great pastor. You know, I think he's from Philadelphia or something like that, but he's a great pastor. He's a hardcore and more power to him. And I wish more pastors would get on the bandwagon with him because we need that hardcore teaching to get into you tainted minds that's out here. To get into these minds that, that believe that everything they're doing is right. You know, to get into these minds to make them think that the Lord is my servant. Instead, the Lord is your servant. Okay, you you know, so look, you guys, and what I mean by that is they make, they feel like everything they do, the father should be okay with them. No, he's he's not your servant in that way, but he's your servant to um in a righteous way. When you what he's what he's trying to teach you and guide you so you can walk in the righteous way. That's the servant the Lord is to you. It's not the other way around. Okay, all right, you guys. Um, again, it's Isaiah chapter two. Um. And, and like I said, this right here, this chapter I'm going to be reading you guys right now, it's basically, is the, the judgments of Judah and Jerusalem right now. And I like, to talk, like I told you guys, Isaiah is broke down in two halves, the good and the constellation. Well, the good, you know, the middle and the constellation, okay? Um, the judgments in the, in the beginning against Judah and Jerusalem, um, and then in the end, the constellation of comfort. That's what you can expect if you walk in righteousness, right? All right, you guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. And you guys have a wonderful day. Happy Tuesday.